Upstairs, Nia coming in, but will take the hit. Eruption on the generator as well. Eruption and Call of Nia does take a hit through the wall. So I don't know. Oh, and the dissolution value. These survivors. Deliverance from Claudette. Sprint bursting to the hot. It's the same with these masks in the one event. She didn't get a mask Ooh. either. But, uh, um, no, my God. Oh, the oh, that, yeah, oh, that was nice. They're trying to pull this cold E. Nerf Nancy, man. She's gonna get hacked, baby. Oh, oh my God, she might just get hacked potentially. I think she does. Holy cow. I cannot yeah. believe. They do get the spirit reset and they get the down. Yes, they will get the spiders. Leaving the trial and there's going to be the teleport with the end of the head. Yeah, needs to go. Welcome back everybody to Champions of the Fog. I'm your host, Little Rugar, and joining me today is another none other than Guildspire, Commissioner in Chief. Long day yesterday. How you feeling, sir? It was a long day indeed, but a welcome one nonetheless. And today we are going to be jumping right on in as we are going to be seeing Chronicles versus Cynic on Rancid with Chronicles killing against Cynic's survivor team as the artist. I'm kind of into it. We saw actually this is reminiscent of yesterday. We saw at least two matches where this was the case. So I'm very curious to see how Chronicles plays this out. Good Corrupt Zone on the other side of main, running back over here, though I'm wondering if the survivors have already made their way to the other side of the map, and just the artist may have not caught them through the corn. Even though they got the good spread, good crow placement, just might have snuck past them. I don't see hide nor hair of any survivor. I don't even see a crow. However, we do see scratch marks right there through the core and survivors on the run. Crows going out and hitting three survivors with the severed hands. And we do see a Quentin here in the shack trying to avoid the crows, but might not be fast enough, but getting the crows off them just in the nick of time. However, Nancy also getting hit somewhere <laughs> off in the distance. These survivors going all over the place in order to avoid the swarm. I was about to say, in the shack, I was imagining something like locker roulette going on, trying to get the crows off of them, and Quentin here was the, drew the lucky end of the, or unlucky end of the straw, and now we take a chase into the back here near the corrupt zone. Artist lining up, Quentin gonna hold W to the tile in the corner. I have a feeling this Quentin may not be long for this world unless something crazy happens here. Yeah. Artists doing something a little bit interesting there. Normally, survivors are under the impression that set up crows, they're going to come around, so they're going to stick to that mm -hmm. corner and cross when they can't get a good line of sight. But artists, they're kind of faking that out, so a cute little mind game there that I have not seen yet before. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah, Quentin going to the corner a bit more, hiding out, and then just kicking it. Quentin lost a lot of distance in the chase, not able to make it to the tile. However, the survivors are fighting back, getting one generator done. Does not look like a deadlock, so we might be seeing an additional gen possibly... Over here at the main building, I would assume that's where we saw the Nancy earlier. I mean, that sorry, is the Lori, I think. True. However, for those Ooh. of you watching the score events, you may have noticed a damage generator signaling a Scourge Hook Pain Residence. So even the most uh... progressed gen in that moment, though not blocked by the entity, was regressed by a total of 50%. That is a fair point. That might be where we didn't see a gen pop up just yet, though. Interesting. I think they have completely swapped generator uh, tactics here. I'm I'm not seeing where they were in the beginning there. They may have also been looking for Deadlock as Deadlock is a super popular. Wait, actually, is Deadlock allowed on Artist? I would have to double check. I do believe that we allowed Deadlock pretty much on every single killer at this point. I don't think it was restricted on any killer uh, for the reason of it's kind of a general perk. But we do see Nia coming in with a sprint burst, getting underneath the artist in the nick of time. Wow. We will see the hook trade, but a second gen popping off for Cynic Survivor Team. I'm about to say, yeah, finishing that gen before that pain rest came in for a second tap. Getting the Quentin before a crucial second stage, they're not giving the artist any value for sitting that one out. I think the artist might have been taken off guard. I think you were right about that sprint first. That they really didn't expect the survivor just, you know, <laughs> cozy on in there and be like, hey, what you doing? And 
advantage thing. I think the artist got flustered, I think. Yeah, oh, is this going to be a shotgun? Degree, oh, my word! We do see the severed hands coming in once again. Goodness. Nancy potentially getting out of the locker just a little bit too early and taking the swarm away from the lorry there and getting down for it. But I say that was very unfortunate for the survivor squad. It looks like Quentin went in for the unhook on the Nia there. However, yeah, this could be a fresh hook coming in on the Nancy. There's a little bit of pandemonium. Artists coming back a little bit here with some pressure. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think between the Scourge Hook, Pain Resonance, and addition to that down on the Nancy, things could definitely turn in the artist's favor. With that being said, mm -hmm. Lori taking another swarm from the Dire Crows. Artist trying to line up for a hit. We do know there's a locker in that tile, and Lori will Ooh. narrowly dodge the Dire Crows as we do see the Killer Instinct pop off instead. I was about to say, that Killer Instinct, and that gave me a heart attack. It's like, that Lori almost tasted the crow, but instead... Coming over here, chasing the Quentin around, coming to the long wall, it looks like. Quentin not having any of it is going to run back in. Looks like Artis is going to go back to their hook here and try and defend it instead. Oh, they got, they got a crow. Is that the Nancy? That does appear to be the Nancy, so it looks like we will see a potential tunnel out here, especially on the LT wall, where the artists can kind of take their time here at the L wall, pressuring that BT, but Nancy with a fake at the L, but getting kind of caught out oh. here, though maybe a head-on play? Oh, they called it! They, they're a knower! Yeah. Oh my goodness, I can't believe that works. Yeah, as soon as I saw the Nancy double back across that locker, the artist and I had the same exact thought of, that's gonna be a head-on, ain't it? Well, with the rule changes we've seen in the, uh, this season specifically, I really feel like head-on is coming to a, you know, a class of its own and players are really starting to utilize its power and I love it. I could not be happier. I keep getting all these comments in my in my game saying, oh, head-on's not a real perk. Head-on's a fun perk. It's not a comp perk. Shut up. You ain't seen nothing. Yeah, when oh, used I love it. well and used in a coordinated fashion, it really can extend chase in the same way that any tile can. It can make some really weak areas and dead zones into potential loops where a survivor can just extend that chase just enough for another gen, if not more, to be completed. We'll say Nia dodging Ooh. the Diac Rose there, but going into the comp corner for the down. And Artis, once again, in a really good spot. Every single hook so far has been a Skirt Choke Pain Resonance. A total of 60% off the most progressed gens throughout mm -hmm. this match so far. And I imagine we might just see another one, though it might be just a tad bit greedy in attempting to yeah. get to the zone. I mean, with the change to hooks, it might not be, but we'll have to see. Oh, that is so. that was the edge of an 11 second. Oh my goodness, but they do finish a gen in the meantime, so... Maybe not, uh, maybe not the most effective one, but they'd still get regression nonetheless. Second hook on the Nia. Which survivor are they not hooked yet? Is it uh, Lori? I do believe it is the... No, actually, I think they have hooked every single survivor at this point in time. They hooked the Nia. Oh, they have? They've hooked the Nancy. Yeah, it looks like they oh, you're are right. the Lori got every picked. single hook at this point in time, so... The artist with a lot of points uh -oh. here already in hand. We see that Severed Hands coming into play. It's why you can't really effectively body block against artists as much as you previously could. And though you got rid of the swarm there, you take the down nonetheless. And uh, unfortunately, they are just a little bit too far away from that pallet to get the stun. They are, they are. And worth noting is, uh, I think with this, this is Death Hook. And now... For, I'm sorry, for a second I thought I heard a scream. I was like, wait, Monstrous Shrine? No, okay, that was just, you know, something else. Anyway, so not really much of a 3 to speak of, but I do think this artist is definitely in 2K territory. And if they play their cards right, maybe even 3K. Yeah, I think it's a very real possibility. Survivors are definitely going to be in a bit of a position here, especially if they are able to get a quick down here on the Nancy. We'll have to wait and see. The artist has been quite hyper lethal. I do want to point out, though, Lori's still in the match, and as we saw earlier, very likely the head on player. So we might also see this chase get extended if need be by the Lori. About to say, they'd have to mix it up if they did, because you know, if Nancy went around again, the. Artists would be like, yeah, no, that's another head-on setup. And I don't know if that, they actually might not try it again if the if they suspect that the artist can detect a potential setup. Oh, double crows though from the severed hands. That means two survivors are being pushed off of these generators, and artists is going to go back to their two gen. 
yeah, I mean, this is the, the really interesting thing about Severed Hands, especially when you're doubling up on gens. It's almost like a pseudo discordance if you're sending out crows for information. And as we see there, the gens still highlighted in yellow that there is going to be a call of Brian regressing that gen by 200% per second thereafter. But it looks like these two survivors are going to be harassing the gen and the artist to uh, pull them off it and hopefully get that gen completed before a down occurs. About to say, have we seen Call of Brian yet this match? Have they even kicked a generator? They, they've kicked a couple gens here and there. Oh, However, uh, you know, definitely have not gotten the Call of Brian noise notifications, though we can say for certainty at this point that it is in fact not an eruption, thus it is in True. fact a Call of Brian. Very good point. I wonder if these survivors are able to call that out potentially yet or if they have enough knowledge. Because we saw the other day, uh, Killer kicking gens a lot, making it seem like they have call right, but in fact faking it out and having the no wet instead, so survivors and possibly having a miscall. call. Yeah, I mean, that's a really good point. And to be fair, we do not know what the fourth perk here is for this True. artist. So it could still be a no wet in their back pocket for all we know. It's a very good point. Okay, so if we're talking about potential end game perks on an artist, do you prefer no wet or no way out? Obviously the combo being banned because dear goodness, that's insane. Like. What, what do you prefer on this killer? I'm just curious. Realistically speaking, I think both have their merits. It depends on the map and how many resources have been, you know, uh, broken throughout the match. I think that's mm. kind of the important factor as to whether Noah's going to get enough value if he can get the down Ooh. beforehand. But Nancy now in chase with a swarm on top of them. Artists sending out the crows and once again just wow. unable to get the down. However, do you want to point out Nancy without any resources here will end up going down though in front of the locker. I imagine Art is going to be checking. Artist? I don't think they would. Okay. I think you expect the Laurie and the uh, Laurie and the Quentin to bang off this jet. Is this a skirt hook? It doesn't matter. The final gen completes. Second up for Nancy. It's a no way out. Okay. Yep. There's the no way out noise notification. And that is going to be a full 60 seconds of no way out as every single survivor here has been hooked at least once. So no way out going to be getting a whole lot of value here. The question is whether or not the artist can find his survivor. And there is the Quentin Ultra. About to say, any... I don't even get, think you need to go for kills here. The artist has fresh hooks everywhere. Just get your extra hook stages here. Even if there's a couple of escapes, you've got a monumental amount of points coming in from these hook states alone. You've got everybody fresh hooked, one survivor dead. I think, uh, what, there's one survivor, two survivors dead at the second hook stage, right? Yep, uh, as of right now, we're looking at actually, let's see, one, two, three, then three. So I think, yeah, we're right now looking at uh, Nancy being the only one on death hook and Quentin and Lori currently on one hook each. Okay, so yeah, there's plenty of hook, uh, points here left for this uh, artist to get. However, with No Way Out now expiring, Quentin might be able to get some distance. However, not going towards the exit gate just yet. Artist has a shot to make a comeback here and get another kill, but so many points have already been accumulated. This will be 15 points for the survivors if they're able to escape currently with everybody but I'm not sure they can't. I think this Quentin is not long for this world. I think they're gonna be able to get another kill here. Yeah, I mean, the survivor's trying to cut off the artist here, trying to get the body block in. Artist trying to work around main to the best of their ability, seeing Quentin go past, having the crows lined up as well. And let's see if they can get the hit with the flight path. It does not look like it actually went through the window, though Quentin might end up getting hit by the Dire Crows. Nonetheless, Artist getting past the Lori. I think they will get in front of them. And Nancy, yeah, the only one left here to take a potential body block. The question is, will they get here in time as the Artist is hot on the Quentin's tail? But the Artist oh, not able to hit over the window. That is looking like a three-man out here unless... Is there any possibility? No, I was thinking I that think maybe so. they could pull off a double tap there, but it doesn't look like it. So sitting oh, with the so three close. man out. That was so, so close for the artist. I I genuinely thought that at the long wall that was going to hit, just barely getting across the threshold there. Honestly, that might be one of those cases where it's a really good ping moment, you know, where it's yeah. like, oh, that probably shouldn't hit. And the game actually was like, oh, everybody has good ping. This is a good, this is a good calculation here, so. And Regardless, really well played. Artists, again, didn't really go for the tunnel super early, but they made up for it in fresh hooks. They got a ton of points for those fresh hooks there. That is, at least, that's a kill. So in three other fresh hooks, that's 15 points base, not including the other hook stages they got. 
Yep, so 17 points, I believe, as 19 far to 15. as uh, the R is concerned. I want to say just 17 points there uh, after the Nancy was the only one to be hooked. Quinton avoiding that second hook there. So I believe it is going to be... Uh, It'll be 19 additional... to 15. I uh, Nope, not 15 to 15. Was it, addition, was, was it seven two, stages? It was three, five, seven. So three per fresh, two for second, right. and then one for the third. So 17 points in that regard. Oh, okay. Oh, right. I, I, I calculated 15 and I started adding two and two again. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yep. But with Pretty that close match, but good stuff. Yeah, it's very close. It's 15 to 17, I do believe, at the end of it all. So Killer avoiding the narrow tie there. But that being mm -hmm. said, we are going to be getting this next lobby set up. While we do, we do remind everyone here today that you, yes, you, the viewers, are our sponsors. So that as they watch all the bits that I tip, all the subs they buy, and of course, all the rogue energy by using the code COTF. Go supporting Champions of Fog in the prize pool for Group A and Group B. With that being said, we'll be back in just a little bit. Welcome back, everybody, to Champions of the Fog. I'm your host, Lord Rugar, and joining me today is another, none other than Guildspire, Commissioner in Chief. Long day yesterday. How you feeling, sir? <sighs> it was a long day indeed, but a welcome one nonetheless. And today we are going to be jumping right on in as we are going to be seeing Chronicles versus Cynic on Rancid with Chronicles killing against Cynic's survivor team as the artist. I'm kind of into it. We saw, actually, this is reminiscent of yesterday. We saw at least two matches where this was the case. So I'm very curious to see how Chronicles plays this out. Good Corrupt Zone on the other side of main, running back over here, though. I'm wondering if the survivors have already made their way to the other side of the map and just the artist may have not caught them through the corn. Even though they got the good spread, good crow placement, just might have snuck past them. I don't see hide nor hair of any survivor. I don't even see a crow. However, we do see scratch marks right there through the core and survivors on the run. Crows going out and Ooh. hitting three survivors with the severed hands. And we do see a Quentin here in the shack trying to avoid the crows, but might not be fast enough, but getting the crows Ooh. off them just in the nick of time. However, Nancy also getting hit somewhere <laughs> off in the distance. These survivors going all over the place in order to avoid the swarm. 
I was about to say, in the shack, I was imagining something like locker roulette going on, trying to get the crows off of them, and Quentin here with the, drew the lucky end of the, or unlucky end of the straw, and now we be taking Chase into the back here near the corrupt zone. Artis lining up. Quentin gonna hold W to the tile in the corner. I have a feeling this Quentin may not be long for this world unless something crazy happens here. Yeah. Artists doing something a little bit interesting there. Normally, survivors are under the impression that set up crows, they're going to come around, so they're going to stick to that mm -hmm. corner and cross when they can't get a good line of sight. But artists, they're kind of faking that out, so a cute little mind game there that I have not seen yet before. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, Quentin going to the corner a bit more, hiding out, and then just kicking it. Quentin lost a lot of distance in the chase, not being able to make it to the tile. However, the survivors are fighting back, getting one generator done. Does not look like a deadlock, so we might be seeing an additional gen possibly... Over here at the main building, I would assume that's where we saw the Nancy earlier. I mean, that sorry, the Lori, I think. True. However, for those Ooh. of you watching the score events, you may have noticed a damage generator signaling a scourge hook pain resonance. So even the most uh... progressed gen in that moment, though not blocked by the entity, was regressed by a total of 50%. That is a fair point. That might be where we didn't see a gen pop up just yet, though. Interesting. I think they have completely swapped generator uh, tactics here. I'm I'm not seeing where they were in the beginning there. They may have also been looking for Deadlock as Deadlock is a super popular. Wait, actually, is Deadlock allowed on Artist? I would have to double check. I do believe that we allowed Deadlock pretty much on every single killer at this point. I don't think it was restricted on any killer uh, for the reason of it's kind of a general perk. But we do see Nia coming in with a sprint first, getting underneath the artist in the nick of time. Wow. We will see the hook trade, but a second gen popping off for Cynic Survivor Team. I'm about to say, yeah, finishing that gen before that pain res came in for a second tap. Getting the Quentin before a crucial second stage, they're not giving the artist any value for sitting that one out. I think the artist might have been taken off guard. I think you were right about that sprint first. That they really didn't expect the survivor just, you know, <laughs> cozy on in there and be like, hey, what you doing? And managing. I think the artist got flustered, I think. Yeah, oh, is this going to be a shotgun? Agree, oh, my word. We do see the severed hands coming in once again. Goodness. Nancy potentially getting out of the locker just a little bit too early and taking the swarm away from the lorry there and getting down for it. But I say that was very unfortunate for the survivor squad. It looks like Quentin went in for the unhook on the Nia there. However, yeah, this could be a fresh hook coming in on the Nancy. There's a little bit of pandemonium artists coming back a little bit here with some pressure. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think between the Scourge Hook Pain Resonance in addition to that down on the Nancy, things could definitely turn in the artist's favor. With that being said, mm -hmm. Lori taking another swarm from the Dire Crows. Artist trying to line up for a hit. We do know there's a locker in that tile, and Lori will Ooh. narrowly dodge the Dire Crows as we do see the Killer Instinct pop off instead. I was about to say, that Killer Instinct, and that gave me a heart attack. It's like, that Lori almost tasted the crow, but instead... Coming over here, chasing Quentin around, coming to the long wall, it looks like. Quentin not having any of it is going to run back, and it looks like Ars is going to go back to their hook here and try and defend it instead. Oh, they got they got a crow. Is that the Nancy? That does appear to be the Nancy, so it looks like we will see a potential tunnel out here, especially on the LT wall, where the Ars can kind of take their time here at the L wall, pressuring that BT, but Nancy with a fake at the L, but getting kind of caught out oh. here, though maybe a head-on play? Oh, they called it! They, they're they a knower! Yep. Oh my goodness, I can't believe that works. Yeah, as soon as I saw the Nancy double back across that locker, the artist and I had the same exact thought of, that's going to be a head-on, ain't it? Well, with the rule changes we've seen in the, uh, this season specifically, I really feel like head-on is coming to a, you know, a class of its own, and players are really starting to utilize its power, and I love it. I could not be happier. I keep getting all these comments in my in my game saying, oh, head-on's not a real perk. Head-on's a fun perk. It's not a comp perk. Shut up. You ain't seen nothing. Yeah, when oh, used I love it. well and used in a coordinated fashion, it really can extend chase in the same way that any tile can. It can make some really weak areas and dead zones into potential loops where a survivor can just extend that chase just enough for another gen, if not more, to be completed. We'll say Nia dodging Ooh. the Diagros there, but going into the comp corner for the down. And Artis, once again, in a really good spot. Every single...
I just finished my rogue and we're back for trial number two. Now it's the turn for Cynic and Chronicles. Yeah, Cynic, Cynic. I don't know what, okay, I'm sorry. My brain's just farting everywhere. I, I don't know what's going on. Cynic's gonna be killing now. Chronicles had a good showing. I think it was really close. I really feel like if the artist had secured one more kill, it'd be in a really rough spot here. But now with an executioner, I think everything's kind of an even playing field. I would prefer artists to Executioner on this map, but I think with Executioner, especially being headed by Ultra, I think Cynic's gonna have to, uh, Chronicles, is gonna play, Chronicles is gonna have to play really, really... I'm sorry, I need to take a break. I need another break. We'll be right back. <laughs> I don't know like, what that uh, was. Sounds like Rue here needs some, instead of the rogue hydration, needs the rogue energy here. But that being oh, said, we are gonna be looking around Rancid here with Ultra piling the Executioner. And right now, if you weren't aware, they were able to avoid a 2K before on survivor side. So Cynic here on the prowl for the first kill. Executioner fire, firing off and getting a very quick two tap there on the claw. That honestly, not sure why they checked the meat room, but did so, and it paid off in kind. No skirt choke pain presence night. there, as we did not see a score event, but a very early first down. So good start here by Cynic's killer team. I was about to say, with a start like that, I, I completely revoke what I said before, even if it wasn't intelligible. Uh, Chronicles is going to have to play very, very cautiously here. That is an incredibly early hook. If they want to, you could just camp this to death. Because if I remember correctly, that corner hook is almost impossible to save from if the killer decides it to be so, right? Yeah, I mean, realistically speaking, it is not a horrible idea that at least progress at the second stage, especially as 30 seconds have already expired. It draws survivors away from their active gens and becomes very difficult for them to unhook unless there are two survivors here. So pulling three survivors off gens in total would be a huge boon here for the executioner to say the least. About to say, getting a survivor to second stage would be incredible, especially for that early down. Like, I don't... I know that people talk about, like, you know, ha uh, Huntress Eerie Hatchets, you know, speed running that first down in a game. I want to know what the quickest down for a comp game is, because that would that might be a contender right there. Yeah, I mean, we've seen some quick downs before, but that one was definitely a first for the Executioner. Do want to note, though, we do see the Entity Blockers there in the distance from a Deadlock. Going to be slowing down Gens just a little bit and showing the Executioner where the most progressed Gen is as well. Do also want to point out here, Claudette now progressing towards death as they are mm -hmm. taken down towards being sent back to Campfire via the Entity. Only 30 seconds, if not less, to go. We do see these Survivors coming on in, and I think Executioner will, in fact, choose to go for the camp here as they continue to proxy we see both the dwight and zarina coming in and dwight may have snuck by but we'll have to wait and see but i say i don't know if they had time to sneak by but they did you're absolutely right i didn't actually catch that very well done by chronicle saving this planet from absolute certain death and now dwight is going to be a guardian of a lifetime not taking the body block there, Claudette going to be getting into Shaq, but I think they might have wasted too much time. And there they go, and an eruption on the ace as well. Oh no. Is there any way to save this Claudette? Is there a decisive strike? Yeah, without a decisive strike, there's not going to be much oh, that they no. can do. In addition, want to point out, Ace was also incapacitated from an eruption mm -hmm. as well. So we saw both the Zarina, we saw the Dwight. Pyramid Head going with a blind shot there, unable to get the hit on the Dwight, however. Though I do imagine I know what his next chase will be on. As we do see another gen popping off in the distance. Maybe a 99 gen, as we saw Zarina over here earlier. So it can't be that she was there for all too long. Quite so. Deadlock Jet in the center as well. I don't know if you can afford to 99 a gen for a Deadlock. I think you just have to try and whittle them away. This Executioner has a very, very, uh, especially with Eruption being in play, I think it'd be very, uh, how do you say, risky to try and 99 a gen in this situation. I think you just have to get one done at a time and hope that your chases are good. Yeah, I would tend to agree. That was, I think, a flashbang oh! there. We saw so uh, Pyramid Head avoiding the blind, but trying to get the down gear on the Dwight. Now into another tile, and Dwight Ooh. going down. An unfortunate down for the Dwight, who is also going to be getting caged, knowing that the Dwight was the one who got the unhook for the Deliverance. 
was about to say, yeah, that is really, really close. Seeing them go to the other side of the map and Executioner wasting no time going back through the middle here, pushing the ace off the gen, not bothering to kick it. And it's just gonna, I think they might be trying to figure out where the, uh, where the Dwight ended up getting caged and maybe trying to proxy that area. Because what is it, 10 meters before it uh, resets? Yep, it is indeed 10 meters and an X number amount of time as well. Honestly, it can be used in some really interesting ways in pushing the cage around, stopping survivors from being able to uncage in the first place as they cross one oh. side of the map to go to the other. That's actually really interesting. Yeah, depending on how long it takes for that uh, timer to tick down. I've never seen a, a killer do that, but now I'm intrigued. I wonder if that might come into play here after all. Also, Dwight hanging out in that cage for a long time. They do finish the central jet in main building, but Executioner applying eruption to a bunch of side gens and actually, where is that cage? I don't see it. Yeah, not seeing it either, but we do see scratch marks back oh. in that corner. Might be that Dwight is there. Sure enough, mm -hmm. that is the case, but no borrowed time on the Dwight. They are in a little bit of a unfortunate position to say the least. And so Dwight now in a chase for his life, though getting a little bit of distance oh. here, it would seem. Is it a head-on? I'm about to say, execution thing of the same thing here. Is it, is it a head-on? It would appear to be the case oh in a bit goodness. of a delayed stun there, but Dwight getting some distance from the execution here as they make it to the Harvester, but this is a really dangerous place to be. Dwight going down, is, eruption oh no. on two survivors, a collective 50 seconds off of gens. That is huge here for Cynic and the executioner. Oh no. That was that was most definitely a missed call out there from the survivors, and it's yeah that might just be game altering and punishing. Wait, is that death hook? Is that the hook bug? That looks like it. So not necessarily a hook bug. I don't want to call it a hook bug. Okay, Instead, that's fair. Instead, want to point that out as in fact a unhook bug, a timer bug, because basically right. what that means is that the unhook occurred basically at the you know the final second and so dbd um in game said oh you're only hooked once but in all actuality the server says no no that was just maybe a millisecond too late so it looks like dwight did progress to second stage after all oh, unbeknownst wow. to us and very likely the survivors as well i i completely forgot about that still being in the game right yeah, you're, you're, you're correct. It is literally milliseconds off. I haven't seen that since probably season four or season three. Yeah, it's, it's been, been a, a long time. It's been a hot minute. I think the last time we saw it happen was actually on a deliverance play as someone oh, unhooked right. at the last moment. And it's why I warn people who use deliverance now, make sure you do it with just a little more time than you think you need because the unhook animation counts for the timer. So right. as you are being unhooked, the timer still ticks down and potentially allows for you to progress another stage. Just all the more reason to bring desperate measures, right? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, especially soon as uh, there's some interesting perks going to be in the mix, but we'll have to wait and see for the new chapter and see how players do utilize them. But uh, Ace now in chase. We saw that killer instinct off the trail of torment and Pyramid Head with a beautiful oh, wow. punishment of the damned. I say that was a beautiful shot there from the executioner. Will they get a double tap? They do double tap on the ace, and this guy's gonna be sent right to the cage. Zarina's gonna have to hide for their life here, but I think this killer has accumulated enough stages to win the set for their team. Yeah, uh, realistically speaking, going to be uh, pretty much nigh impossible to see an escape here for the Zarina, I'd imagine both injured as well as the cage on the ace and uh pyramid head here doing a little dance real quick while i wait for their <laughs> eruption timer to expire and go off a cooldown but i imagine ace probably back in the same tile that we saw before on the dwight and uh sure enough there yep. they are about to say even if serena escapes through the hatch here or you know by some miracle the exit gate there's still four points behind on the uh, the generators here, unfortunately. And yeah, I, I gotta say the snowball started from the beginning with finding an early survivor and this game just never swung back. This killer has had immense pressure from the get go. 
Yeah, no, seriously. Some really good plays from beginning to end. Some amazing punishment of the dams, both blind and calculated. And another one here, Zarina doing a great job avoiding them, however, though I think the executioner is satisfied with their results, just kind of making some cheeky plays at this point in time. Indeed. I think they're going to be playing, you know, for the heart of the game, showing that we're not going to go down without a fight, but... Oh, no. I, I, I think in scrims this week, they're going to talk about eruption callouts. Well, I mean, I guess it's not really necessary with eruption getting changed on Tuesday, but... I mean, yes, but no. So, obviously, in Group A, at least in COTF, if the aura reading stands, eruption true, will be banned. True, true. With that being said, in other organizations, <laughs> that might not be the case, and you still do want to probably work on eruption callouts as you will be revealed to the killer. So, though you aren't incapacitated point. at this point, you're still going to not want to be revealed to where you are. That's a fair point, actually. I, I can get behind that. Ah. Yeah, Rupture's going to be really good. And again, I, I kind of appreciate what Behavior did after, you know, they effectively just curb stomped Eruption into the ground. And then at least with the community feedback, you know, pulling it back to at least 10% overall progress. So it's not just like this absolutely dead perk. It's still useful. But it's not, you know, obviously it's not the powerhouse that it is today where it's just like, we have to go out of our way to make sure it's just not straight up abused in most of the matches, right? Yeah, exactly. And I think we're going to see a lot less in pubs, for example. But it's going to be oh, easy yeah. to see what the, the meta shakes out to be both in competitive play as well as just general play. But mm. only time will tell as Chapter 27 dropping this Tuesday. But uh, with that being said, that there will be the end of this match. And I do believe Cynic walking away with the W mm -hmm. in set number one. Don't worry, though. We are going to go into set number two now, where we are going to the Wretched Shop, where Cynic will be bringing the Artist Against Chronicles Survivor Team. I'm kind of into it. I... <sighs> okay, not to, not to ship topics again. Chapter 27, Skull Merchant, Comp Viable. <sighs> In the way that most people intend to use them, the answer is no. Could there okay. be some unique circumstances where I think we might see them? Yes. But are hey. they going to be a, a high tier in comp? Probably not. I can dream. Maybe, you know, exhibition matches. We've been having more of those exhibition matches. Maybe we can see an exhibition match with the Skull Merchant. We'll you see. Know not, not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. But that being said, we are going to be getting that next lobby set up here in just a moment. Before we do, though, we do want to give a quick shout out to our partners over at Pugdom. Pugdom is a Dead by Daylight competitive community who is very much like Champs of the Fog. In fact, mm -hmm. they are hosting Group B of Champs of the Fog over on their channel. They're going to be wrapping up their season soon over there. So make sure you stop on by, say hi, and watch the finals, semifinals, and quarterfinals there as well to see what Group B team will make it out as the champion of the Fog for Season 6. With that being said, we'll be back in just a little bit.
Just finished my rogue and we're back for trial number two. Now it's turn for Cynic and Chronicles. Yeah, Cynic, Cynic. I don't know what, okay, I'm sorry. My brain's just farting everywhere. I, I don't know what's going on. Cynic's gonna be killing now. Chronicles had a good showing. I think it was really close. I really feel like if the artist had secured one more kill, it'd be in a really rough spot here. But now with an executioner, I think everything's kind of an even playing field. I would prefer artists to Executioner on this map, but I think with Executioner, especially being headed by Ultra, I think Sinister, uh, Chronicles, is gonna play, Chronicles is gonna have to play really, really, I'm sorry, I need to take a break. I need another road break, we'll be right back. <laughs> I don't know like, what that uh, was. Sounds like Rue here needs some, instead of the rogue hydration, needs the rogue energy here. But that being oh, said, we are gonna be looking around Rancid here with Ultra piling the Executioner. And right now, if you weren't aware, they were able to avoid a 2K before on survivor side. So Cynic here on the prowl for the first kill. Executioner fire, firing off and getting a very quick two tap there on the claw. That honestly, not sure why they checked the meat room, but did so and it paid off in kind. No skirt choke pain Good presence there night. as we did not see a score event, but a very early first down. So good start here by Cynic's killer team. I was about to say, with a start like that, I, I completely revoke what I said before, even if it wasn't intelligible. Uh, Chronicles is gonna have to play very, very cautiously here. That is an incredibly early hook. If they want to, you could just camp this to death. Because if I remember correctly, that corner hook is almost impossible to save from if the killer decides it to be so, right? Yeah, I mean, real estate speaking, it is not a horrible idea that at least progress at the second stage, especially as 30 seconds have already expired. It draws survivors away from their active gens and becomes very difficult for them to unhook unless there are two survivors here. So pulling three survivors off gens in total would be a huge boon here for the executioner to say the least. About to say, getting a survivor to second stage would be incredible, especially for that early down. Like, I don't, I know that people talk about like, you know, ha uh, Huntress Eerie Hatchets, you know, speed running that first down in a game. I want to know what the quickest down for a comp game is, because that would, that might be a contender right there. Yeah, I mean, we've seen some quick downs before, but that one was definitely a first for the Executioner. Do want to note, though, we do see the Entity Blockers there in the distance from a Deadlock. Going to be slowing down gens just a little bit and showing the Executioner where the most progressed gen is as well. Do also want to point out here, Claudette now progressing towards death as they are mm -hmm. taken down towards being sent out to campfire via the Entity. Only 30 seconds, if not less, to go. We do see these survivors coming on in, and I think Executioner will, in fact, choose to go for the camp here as they continue to proxy we see both the dwight and zarina coming in and dwight may have snuck by but we'll have to wait and see but i say i don't know if they had time to sneak by but they did you're absolutely right i didn't actually catch that very well done by chronicle saving this planet from absolute certain death and now dwight is going to be a guardian of a lifetime not taking the body block there claudette going to be getting into shack but i think they might have wasted too much time and there they go, and an eruption on the ace as well. Oh no. Is there any way to save this Claudette? Is there a decisive strike? Yeah, without a decisive strike, there's not gonna be much oh, that they no. can do. In addition, wanna point out Ace was also incapacitated from an eruption mm -hmm. as well. So we saw both the Zarina, we saw the Dwight. Pyramid Head going with a blind shot there, unable to get the hit on the Dwight, however. Though I do imagine I know what his next chase will be on. As we do see another gen popping off in the distance, maybe a 99 gen, as we saw Zarina over here earlier. So it can't be that he was there for all too long. 
quite so. Deadlock Jet in the center as well. I don't know if you can afford to 99 a gen for a Deadlock. I think you just have to try and whittle them away. This Executioner has a very, very, uh, especially with Eruption being in play, I think it'd be very, uh, how do you say, risky to try and 99 a gen in this situation. I think you just have to get one done at a time and hope that your chases are good. Yeah, with Tender Greed, that was, I think, a flashbang oh! there. We saw so uh, Pyramid Head avoiding the blind, but trying to get the down gear on the Dwight. Now into another tile, and Dwight Ooh. going down. An unfortunate down for the Dwight, who is also going to be getting caged, knowing that the Dwight was the one who got the unhook for the deliverance. I was about to say, yeah, that is really, really close. Seeing him go to the other side of the map, and Executioner wasting no time going back through the middle here, pushing the ace off the gen not bothering to kick it and it's just gonna i think they might be trying to figure out where the uh where the dwight ended up getting caged and maybe trying to proxy that area because what is it 10 meters before it uh resets yep it is indeed 10 meters and an x number amount of time as well honestly it can be used in some really interesting ways in pushing the cage around stopping survivors from being able to uncage in the first place as they cross one oh. side of the map to go to the other that's actually really interesting. Yeah, depending on how long it takes for that uh, timer to tick down. I've never seen a, a killer do that, but now I'm intrigued. I wonder if that might come into play here after all. Also, Dwight hanging out in that cage for a long time. They do finish the central jet in main building, but Executioner applying eruption to a bunch of side gens. And actually, where is that cage? I don't see it. Yeah, not seeing it either, but we do see scratch marks back oh. in that corner. Might be that Dwight is there. Sure enough, mm -hmm. that is the case, but no borrowed time on the Dwight. They are in a little bit of a unfortunate position, to say the least. And so Dwight now in a chase for his life, though getting a little bit of distance oh. here, it would seem. Is it a head-on? I'm about to say, Executioner thinking the same thing here. Is it a, is it a head-on? It would appear to be the case oh in a bit of a delayed stun there, but Dwight getting some distance from the execution here as they make it to the Harvester, but this is a really dangerous place to be. Dwight going down, is, eruption oh no. on two survivors, a collective 50 seconds off of gens. That is huge here for Cynic and the Executioner. Oh no. That was that was most definitely a missed call out there from the survivors, and it's yeah, that might just be game altering and punishing. Wait, is that death hook? Is that the hook bug? That looks like it. So not necessarily a hook bug. I don't want to call it a hook bug. Okay, Instead, that's fair. Instead, want to point that out as in fact a unhook bug, a timer bug, because basically right. what that means is that the unhook occurs. Welcome back to Champions of the Fog, everybody. We're going into trial number three here. Cynic's going to be cranking out the artist on the Wretched Shop. And I'm kind of excited because uh, Chronicle started off with artists, and now we get to see, you know, how Cynic handles the artist. Who's uh, who's piloting the artist here, by the way? 
I imagine since we did stay in the same lobby, it is going to be mm. Ultra once again. All right, and all right. Based on their execution of play, I imagine the artist will be just as good, if not better. So we are jumping right on in. Sure enough, it is Ultra behind the artist, this time on the Wretched Shop against Chronicles Survivor Team. That is quite a hefty spread on that corrupt intervention not the not the best one you'd be hoping for here but we'll have to see how the how the artist tackles it we do see scratch marks here near where the crows flew and running back into fun bus maybe expecting the survivor to have stuck around here and not be the one running yeah they did by bondage white i believe yeah, really good call there by the artist, kind of knowing where the survivors would end up going thereafter, and Dwight getting a bit of distance here into the next tile. For sure, coming into this TNL wall, artist setting up some more crows, and Dwight just holding W for dear life, saying, get me to the other side of the map, please. This is actually kind of a barren area. There's usually a pallet or two here, but there's nothing, and Dwight's going to have to be forced to go back into the shack here, as there is nothing for them. I think they were hoping for some better uh, tiles to loop on. Yeah, I'd imagine so. Dwight looping back Ooh. into Shaq, though, might not know the Dire Crows there. And honestly, the artists doing exactly what they need to do. Be mm -hmm. patient. And they got the reward for it and will get the Shaq pal out of it as well. For sure. Just another resource in this area. Now this area is really barren without Shaq pal there. You got a TNL wall and you got absolutely nothing else. Basement hook coming in to boot. Survivors, again, kind of having an upward battle here. Not the, again, not the Dwight went down, you know, double tap, but finding out that there is uh, nothing out here the hard way is rough. Yeah, I mean, that's Dead by Daylight RNG for you. Artists sending out some crows to get some information, finding no one though, so it could potentially be on those uh, two gens that were in between that split. And I think artists now checking just for that, but seeing that they will get a swarm there on the Zarina, trying to set up for a bit of a shotgun here to get an injury. And looks like once again, they oh, will wow. not only get some information, they get the injury, and we will be seeing a bit of a proxy camp here from the artist. It would make the most sense, especially if you can land shotguns like that with any consistency at all. You don't need to leave this area. Again, not not the earliest down, not obviously not as early as the previous one, but oh no, the severed hands coming in. We might be seeing another flurry of downs, especially because and it got reapplied again, Serena. Oh no. Oh man, this 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 artist isn't nowhere near these survivors, and they're toying with them. This is incredible. Ooh, yeah, good line I play mean... though. Some really amazing plays here by the artist. Oh, no. A lot of value here out of Severed Hands, but... Oh, what? I'm not exactly sure what happened there. Oh, no. That might have been input. They might have got reverted on the input there. Oh, no. Yeah, they went down. The, the lithe work, they got past the artist, and then they did go to second stage, but they, they couldn't pull. I, I've had that happen where the input gets, gr like, just removed from your screen. It resets, and... Oh, these survivors are in for a bad time now. They do finish the second generator, though. They aren't yeah. giving up. On, on the bright side, they do get that second generator, but yeah, really unfortunate situation there. I think you're right that it may just progress to second stage and thus stop them from being able to unhook and thus causing them a down as well. We're going to be seeing Zek go to death as well, being sent back to the campfire via the Entity. Just unfortunate scenario again and again and again, leaving these survivors as a three-man here in this match, but with Claudette in the basement as well, and Zarina in chase, things are looking quite grim. About to say, yeah, <laughs> both these survivors are injured in chase, and ace maybe be the one to go over there and artist just has all the pressure in the world here oh but they they missed the the crow but they were able to get the hit in time through the window they do get the unhook before claudette progresses though so first they're coming in for the zarina here yeah so works out for the artist there i was expecting them to just kind of be patient like they did previously but zarina mm. you know knowing that they were actually going to fire off dodging the dire crows but taking it anyways a bit unfortunate but working out in the artist's favor especially as we do see another scourge truck pain resins coming mm. in regressing that progress gen by 15 percent but not a lot of progression on it so things are looking a bit grim here for the survivors yeah unfortunate scenarios uh side and more unfortunate scenarios coming in here. Claudette getting hit, and now Ace is the only one left available. And unless I'm wrong, I don't believe Unbreakable is here. So unless the Ace is able to do the chase of their life, running into where the only pallet on the side of the map is, and actually just going to hold W into the, uh, the an extra TNL wall. There's a lot of TNL walls in this setup. 
Yeah, which is a little bit unusual, but once again, kind of talking about uh, Dead by Daylight RNG. Sometimes you can give you every strong tile in the game. Sometimes it can give you nothing but fillers, and sometimes mm -hmm. you get just all of the TNL walls. You know, I'm here for it. I like TNL walls, but maybe not this many TNL walls, and I don't know if this ace is going to be able to get the unhook here. No, they're not, and this looks like it's going to be lights out. A lot of unfortunate circumstances here for the survivors, but the killer capitalizing on it to boot and looks like we're gonna have a 4k at three gens remaining really rough start for them yeah absolutely the question is whether or not they're going to be able to find the survivor on the ground the claudette who was last yeah, seen yeah. in the shack though it would only lose them a couple of points it would definitely be a boon for the survivors given the circumstances yeah, I was about to say that with the with the points difference, that's uh that's one and a half gens if you force the bleed out. Well, no, Cloud, it's not worth that. Oh yeah, I was about to say they're worth an extra point off. So, unfortunately, yeah, this is looking like a four K. Yeah. I shouldn't say unfortunately that like the the killer played super well. I I, just, I feel really bad that the survivors had this happen to them. Like, yeah, I, it, it's one thing because I I I've never seen that happen in a comp game where the survivor isn't able to pull the survivor off hook before i've had it in pubs i've had it plenty of times in pubs yeah some speculation in chat saying that the claw at that moment may have been lagging a little bit as also seen yeah. by the stuttering from the artist on the pickup which if mm -hmm. is the case really unfortunate as we've seen before whether it be dc's or general lag uh you know sometimes the worst killer of them all is your isp True, true. We go into a debate about the worst ISPs here. <laughs> There's too many to name because true. the list is all of them. But with that true. being said, that there will mm. end this match and we will be moving into trial number four of set number two, this time with Chronicles killing as the Wraith against Cynic's survivor team. With that being said, though, we are going to go on a quick little break as we do set up this lobby. But before we do, we do want to mind everyone here today that you, yes, you, the viewers, are our sponsors. So that as they watch, all the bits that I tip, all the stuff that I buy, and of course, all the rogue energy by using the code COTF. Goes to point, Chamber of the Fog, and the prize pool for Group A and Group B. With that being said, we'll be back in just a bit.
Welcome back to Champions of the Fog, everybody. We're going into trial number three here. Cynic's going to be cranking out the artist on the Wretched Shop. And I'm kind of excited because uh, Chronicle started off with artists, and now we get to see, you know, how Cynic handles the artist. Who's, uh, who's piloting the artist here, by the way? I imagine since we did stay in the same lobby, it is going to be mm. Ultra once again. All right, and all right. Based on their executional play, I imagine the artist will be just as good, if not better. So we are jumping right on in. Sure enough, it is Ultra behind the artist, this time on the Wretched Shop against Chronicle's Survivor Team. That is quite a hefty spread on that corrupt intervention not the not the best one you'd be hoping for here but we'll have to see how the how the artist tackles it we do see scratch marks here near where the crows flew and running back into fun bus maybe expecting the survivor to have stuck around here and not be the one running yeah they did by bondage white i believe yeah, really good call there by the artist, kind of knowing where the survivors would end up going thereafter and Dwight getting a bit of distance here into the next tile for sure coming into this tnl wall artist setting up some more crows and dwight just holding w for dear life saying get me to the other side of the map please this is actually kind of a barren area there's usually a pallet or two here but there's nothing and dwight's gonna have to be forced to go back into the shack here as there is nothing for them i think they were hoping for some better uh tiles to loop on yeah i'd imagine so dwight looping back Ooh. into shack though might not know the dire crows there and honestly the artist doing exactly what they need to do be mm -hmm. patient and they got the reward for it and we'll get the shack pal out of it as well for sure just another resource in this area now this area is really barren without shack pal there you got a tnl wall and you got absolutely nothing else basement hook coming in to boot survivors again kind of having an upward battle here not the again not the dwight went down you know double tap but finding out that there is uh nothing out here the hard way is rough yeah, I mean, that's Dead by Daylight RNG for you. Artists sending out some crows to get some information. Finding no one, though, so it could potentially be on those uh, two gens that were in between that split. And I think artists now checking just for that. But seeing that they will get a swarm there on the Zarina, trying to set up for a bit of a shotgun here to get an injury. And looks like, once again, they oh, will wow. not only get some information, they get the injury. And we will be seeing a bit of a proxy camp here from the artist. It would make the most sense, especially if you can land shotguns like that with any consistency at all. You don't need to leave this area. Again, not not the earliest down, not obviously not as early as the previous one, but oh no, the severed hands coming in. We might be seeing another flurry of downs, especially because and it got reapplied again, Serena. Oh no. Oh man, this 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 artist isn't nowhere near these survivors, and they're toying with them. This is incredible. Ooh, yeah, good line I play mean... though some really amazing plays here by the artist oh, a no. lot of value here out of severed hands but oh what i'm not exactly sure what happened there oh no that might have been input they might have got reverted on the input there oh no yeah they went down the, the lines worked they got past the artist and then they did go to second stage but they they couldn't pull I, i've had that happen where the input gets gr like just removed from your screen it resets and Oh, these survivors are in for a bad time now. They do finish a second generator, though. They aren't yeah. giving up. On, on the bright side, they do get that second generator, but yeah, really unfortunate situation there. I think you're right that it may just progress the second stage and thus stop them from being able to unhook and thus causing them a down as well. We're going to be seeing Zek go to death as well, being sent back to the campfire via the Entity. Just unfortunate scenario again and again and again, leaving these survivors as a three-man here in the...
Welcome back, everybody, from your Rogue Break. We're going into trial number four. Chronicle is going to be cranking out the Wraith. And I will say, I, I don't put Wraith and Artis in the same category. We've seen crazier things. Maybe this Wraith comes out here and just two taps every single survivor in existence. But the race got an uphill battle, to say the least. And I'm just, I'm honestly just looking for some really solid chases and some really sweet mind games. That's what I'm looking for here. Yeah, I mean, realistically speaking, based on the circumstance, I'm thinking that the Wraith just needs to go for the slug play. I, I don't think there's any situation where Wraith's mm. chases can be short enough to where they can avoid that. So, going to be interesting to see what they bring here. We see them chasing the Nia, getting them off that tile, but I don't think they'll be able to get to the pal fast enough as Nia will get the stun on the Wraith. Yeah, they will. And notice uh, this killer is actually Thuman quite a bit. I believe that is uh, the Windstorm add-on. Am I seeing this correctly? That would be correct. The only major downside of that is that it's going to be taking you a little bit longer to uncloak, which is a major downside in the grand scheme of things that we're seeing here at the tiles, the Wraith having to take that much longer. But a very mm -hmm. quick break there on pallets and breakable walls. Whether or not that matters, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, it looks like the, yeah, look at this setup. These survivors have a really good amount of pallets, good uh, junk tile here. Survivors are going to be very, very safe for their mind games. And Wraith doing a decent job. I mean, I I definitely would have uh, just stayed cloaked there. They actually took the swing and survivors just got them. And now just, you know, breaking pallets, not leaving this chase uh, for too long and going back and looking for another gen or maybe another survivor to uh, pressure off a gen here. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. No gens popping off just yet. I will say survivors are keenly aware of the existence of Overcharge. If they have since touched that gen highlighted in yellow and getting a bit of a Ooh. whiff here on the Lord, just unable to connect. The Wraith needs to reduce resources and get downs quick. Yeah, I was about to say, they're, they're going around, they're pushing survivors off gens. They're using this corrupt period to their advantage. Again, being having the ability as Wraith to just, you know, zoom around the map, they are doing a lot of pressure here. Might get a, oh, it's so close to getting that hit on the Lori. Just barely whiffing and looking around back at their generator. Yeah, they need to commit to something at some point, but they have a little bit more time. They How many pallets have they gotten rid of? Like four so far? I mean, a decent amount. The question is, will it matter? We see another kick of the gen. It really is testing these survivors' capability mm -hmm. of uh, hitting their skill checks. I also do want to point out, since we know that it is overcharged, it is not colorblind, so that is, in fact, an eruption being applied to all these gens. It makes sense. Ooh, did they get the... Yeah, they actually faked the vault out. Good mind games there from the Wraith. This is going to be an M1 coming in on the Nancy. Are they going to commit to this chase? Uh, nope. Looks like they're going to reply overcharge. And I'll go back, maybe hoping that, uh, you know, there's a missed skill check here. Hoping for 10% off the generator. But I don't believe that was a missed skill check. Now they're just going to have to hope Eruption can carry. I have to wait and see. I do want to point out the one thing that was happening there as well, on top of the overcharge being reapplied, that also was 2.5% be taken off every time they kick the gen. Oh, and Nancy no. with a little bit of a fake out there, as they will end up getting stunned on the Wraith while cloaked, mind you, which is huge. For those of you who do not know, when Wraith is cloaked and gets stunned, that stun timer is actually even longer. Yeah, isn't that a five isn't that a five second uh stun duration? Yeah, I believe so. That's actually insanely brutal. Ultra coming in here for the body block on the Nancy. Trying to give them some distance. And it looks like the Nancy did get quite a bit of distance there. It looks like Wraith is uh, shifting targets here, looking for the Quentin, though this might be a balanced landing. Do they get the block? They do, but now you have the window at the main building, or I'm sorry, it's Shaq. Saying this uh, Nancy over, I'm sorry, is this Lori? This looks to be yeah. a Lori. Yeah, Nancy's still injured, and we do see another gen popping off. However, do need to keep in mind that at this point is now a tie condition. If in the mm -hmm. Wraith can get a 4K here and now. Like I said, things going to require every single player to be slugged out. I don't think we can give them even a chance of unhooking or just sitting on a gen for any extended period of time. I was about to say, meeting the tie conditions for the set would be a huge boon, but... Unless I'm wrong. Oh, they get the down. There's the eruption. And I do believe we can call out this uh, fourth perk of survivors are aware of it now, correct? Yep, they will be aware of the existence of Knockout, which basically kind of ties into the playstyle that I was suggesting earlier, which is going to be a bit of a slugout play, slowing things down just a little bit on the recovery, so that way it's going to take longer for survivors to pick them up as well. Not to mention, 
taking the time to have to te uh, tell each other where exactly the slug is in the first place. I was about to say, yeah, the Knockout is, I think this is the first time I have ever seen Knockout in a game of Dead by Daylight of comp. I've seen it in pubs on a rare occasion, but in comp, I can't remember the last time I've seen this. Yeah, I would tend to agree. Quentin trying to go for the stun there, but not able to do so in time. Wraith going for a very aggressive swing here, but oh. due to Windstorm, they just are slowed down so much during that uncloak. Yeah, super unfortunate there. I, 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 I still stand for the changes that Behavior did on the Wraith initially, you know, giving him base kit, Windstorm, and everything else. But man, the Windstorm add-ons, we really don't see them that often anymore. It's, it's usually a Swift Hunt add-on, isn't it? Yeah, we see a lot of Swift Hunt. We see, uh, you know, Serpent. We see the Insta Break, uh, you know, uh, add-on as well for windows and walls. And Wraith here in a really unfortunate position. We saw three survivors there. Mm -hmm. Surprise, based on the wind condition, they didn't just go for the gen with three people there. I'm pretty sure they would have been able to complete it, but uh, we do see Ultra, the Quinton, heal back up using the medkit. Wraith, once again, with another body block. I will give them credit where credit's due. Really good jobs on these body blocks, ensuring that the survivors mm -hmm. are in some tough positions before they take a hit. Absolutely. My guess is, while they understand the wind condition is achievable there, I think they're actually opting to use this as a... You know, sometimes see when the when the wind condition is super, uh, you know, out of reach or really difficult, they'll use it as you know a time to you know get IRL practice. You know, practicing on a like back uh, back when I you know played uh, soccer back in a you know juvie league and whatever. If if you know the game is pretty much over, make it hard on yourselves, force the practice. You know. I don't know. It's and possible, might but also here. maybe just a little bit of uh, miscommunication based on the wind condition. You know, we saw maybe. it yesterday in DBDCC where the wind condition had been met and then some for one of the teams, but the nurse wanting to get the 4K no matter what just kept the game going. And, you know, for every right, they played really well. But mm -hmm. uh, today could be seen that as well. But Wraith, a bit concerned about the progress on this gen. Once again, not seeing a lot of skill check misses here. You know, there is a question to be made that at higher levels are difficult skill checks actually Ooh. difficult and two uh -oh. incapacitations and a eruption to boot on two gens this could be huge for the raid it really could be given the uh <laughs> the what would you say the the stamina to continue on here as a uh, lori does get body blocked that's kind of big there's another down failed skill check however over at the shack i'm sorry the main building is that the overcharge skill check? Did they miss it? Is that 10%? It, it may have been overcharged, but it also may have been the pickup, maybe, is my only other thought. Wraith trying to find where the pickup That's is. Fair. We see both Nancy and the Nia here. Wraith going to be trying to get in front of the window, but opting to go for the Nancy instead. And a little bit of a fake out, oh. I think, as Nancy was able to get to the window in time. Yeah, they didn't there. Uh, yep, there is the third generator. I think Survivor is finally consolidating and saying, like, yeah. We don't, we, didn't, we don't need to test this anymore. Just get that third gen, and there you go. They do manage to finish the third generator. Lori does get picked up. Nancy going down over the pallet. And now the question is, can... Do you think Wraith is going to try and still push for the four-man slug? Try to, uh, you know, get the condition even though the, the game's been lost? I mean, I, I wouldn't see why not. You've played into it this far. I'd say keep on going, and Wraith going to be doing just that. We do see that slug out. Lori trying to take the body block. Wraith going to a bit turn Ooh. around, though, as Lori does vault the window into Shaq. And uh, at this point in time, it's going to be a little bit of a drawn-out game as Wraith, with their gen regression, is able to really slow things down. I'm wondering if maybe instead of Corrupt, as strange it sounds, maybe a Deadlock would have been in order. I could kind of see that. I would have to go back and see how staggered the first two gens were. Because, yeah, the third gen took a while to finish. But the first two, there might have actually been enough time to where Deadlock would have been a, a decent option there. But at the same time, I feel like Corrupt really did buy them a lot of time and pressure. Because they, especially with Wraith being able to, you know, just zoom across the map. You could really, you know, cat and mouse these gens in this area. Because you only had four to patrol. Is that a soul guard? No, that wasn't a soul guard, I don't think. I think that may have been... Actually, no, I don't think we're going to live forever. Is we're going to forever allowed? I'm trying to remember because it's been a hot minute since I've even thought about that in use outside of pubs. But that's either we're going to live forever or a soul guard because those are only two perks that will allow a uh, endurance hit off of pickup like that. I'm guessing it's a soul guard because I thought we're gonna live forever wasn't allowed, but I yeah. might be wrong. 
I, I, oh, I'd have to double check. And I, I mean, I think you're right because of the nature of Rigmarole Forever and how repeatable it could be in certain scenarios. Mm -hmm. So I think you might be right in thinking that is a soul guard. Yeah, and to be fair, I, I kind of stand by the soul guard pick. You don't know this Wraith might have brought a, especially if you were expecting a slug play, like you, you predicted the slug play, these survivors might have been expecting a slug play. And maybe they brought Ruin or something else to try and, you know, just have passive slowdown pushing survivors off the generators. But yeah, I think they've given up the slug play and they're going to go for this basement hook instead. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense at this point in time, you know, the slug plays have been good, but these uh, survivors have been really good and really efficient of regrouping, getting a group heal in. I mean, there is a question once again to whether or not, which one's better for the slug play? Is it knockout or is it sloppy butcher? And in many ways, in my opinion, I would argue that it might be sloppy butcher just because of the amount of time it takes for you to heal a survivor after the pickup. Mm. And I think that's what we're seeing here is you know, at the end of the day with one person, it's 16 seconds. And yes, this is extending the match. It's drawing it out because that means more people off of gens. However, what it also means is, is that they're still able to heal in 16 seconds or less depending on the number of survivors healing. That's a fair point. Yeah, getting everybody back up to full health would be taking a lot longer. Also, I mean, there was that brief period where sloppy because of the mangled bug actually did affect that on the ground. That would have been insane, but yeah, thanks. No, I would, I would have to agree. That was fixed pretty swiftly for all. It of was. Them. Yeah, props to behavior for that. What might have been one of the swiftest bug fixes I have seen in a long time for behavior. So props to that. I mean, I guess it would have been a, a more singular point of fail, but yeah, thankfully that didn't stick around very long because. The amount of legions with knockout and sloppy butcher was getting ridiculous. Okay, oh, I can imagine. <laughs> with that said, taking chase here at the junk tile. I think this might result in a hit on the Nancy. Yeah, there's it is. And they'll be running out into the middle of the map. We see that Jin's still highlighted in yellow, and I think the raid's gonna break chase to go check it. No, they're gonna actually try and get it back up on this Nancy. Yeah, they're trying to get in front of the Nancy body block once again. Ooh. Like I said, to give credit where credit's due, Wraith's been doing a fantastic job, but Lori coming in wow. and protecting the president's last moment, <laughs> honestly, just threading the needle there. Absolutely. The body blocks and rotation from these survivors so far have been really good. And we've actually seen that in the past couple of days too. Especially with these M1 killers that we're seeing a little bit of recently. Survivors really showing how well they rotate and how good their communication is, showing that they're not just, you know, having the hundreds of, power, of hours of practice against, you know, Nurse and Blight, showing that they can play against these uh, lower tier killers in a very efficient and ruthless manner. Yeah, I would tend to agree, and looks like we're going to be going back to the slug play here. Lori on the ground, Quinton up and pushed off a gen. We're going to see the M1 hit there. The question is whether or not they're going to commit to the chase, especially as Quinton making their way toward the shack, which we seem to be a little bit difficult for the Wraith to manage. Though, if we will point out, this is where we saw the Nancy nearly go down. And speaking of Nancy, here we are again with another eruption and overcharge kick on that gen. I to say, this killer is playing it ultra methodically, to say the least. They're... Very, very patient, going back, checking their generators, taking their chases, and leaving them if something goes wrong, really spreading their pressure out. And I think I'm beginning to see why these survivors have prioritized resetting so much. It's really been impressive to see. <laughs> Trying to mind game there to see if Nancy's going to get the call up for, oh, he's leaving me, and start healing, but no, doesn't mean anything. And they get the body block here on the Quentin as well. Yeah, like I said, a really good plays, and also want to point out just the sheer number of like stealthists the Wraith has gotten. We saw there the the notification or score events for both the damage generators as well as the brutality or basically using their power on survivors has been maxed out this match for what it's worth. Just a, a little sign that the Wraith doing a really fantastic job making use of all of their resources. Absolutely, and getting the fastball, but not going to be enough as they do go down at the vault. Going to reapply overcharge and eruption to this generator. I imagine they go back and check the main building. Seems like they got the unhook. That was a pretty quick heal, but it might have just been two survivors. Is it one or two is the question here. Yeah, it we'll might have, have been, yeah, it was one. It, we'll have to wait and find out, but yeah, it does look to be that way. I mean, they've been working on these gens for a while, so Overcharge Eruption mm -hmm. definitely put in a lot of work here and just forcing survivors to go across map to get that pickup, to also take the time to communicate with each other where Ooh. they are. Because, like, you don't really think about it, though Knockout doesn't seem like a good perk, it still requires you to communicate, hey, I'm at 12, we're at 12, here at 12. And so I imagine there is a little bit of time loss there uh, due to that kind of back and forth. 
That's a fair point. And like you said before, too, you're also having to recover slower, so it's going to be a lot harder to, you know, get that pickup in a timely manner as well. And that's why we see a lot of these survivors, you know, near the two-minute mark of the bleed-out. Uh, most pub games would be like, oh, this killer is so toxic, and this killer is just like, bro, my win con is so hard. Why can't you just let me slug you out? Yeah, you're not wrong, but uh, Wraith going back to these gens. Honestly, gen with a lot less progression. Overcharge mm -hmm. and Eruption doing its job, but Nancy coming in, and Nia as well. Ooh. Looks like Nia will end up taking a hit here and uh, trying to avoid that, taking out the window, but not able to make it work as Wraith will be patient enough and will get the hit. Looks like they will then go back for the Nancy once again. And do you want to point out that Lori now with just about a minute left on their bleed out timer? About to say, yeah, we're starting to get to that point where the wind condition is going to be start to, you know, drain away as the timer is run out and you're not going to be able to get the full points for these hooks. I think Quentin is the only one that's even been hooked so far and they are death hook now. I wonder if maybe finding the Quentin, getting to the, uh, the kill on them, that might be the condition here because then forcing a 3v1 in this scenario gets a lot harder. Your resets get a lot worse. And I'm wondering actually who came over. It's the Quentin. I think you tunnel up the Quentin here and then try and go for it. Yeah, I think that's exactly what the Wraith is thinking as well. And uh, with the lack of resources that are left in Get the, the map, Wraith is in a really, really strong position. Absolutely. It's actually kind of incredible to look at this because survivors are still at two gens remaining. They might actually be able to pull out a 4K here at two gens remaining on this race just because of this really off the wall play style that we're seeing here. Because now it's a 3v1. Survivors are getting the reset. I'm wondering if this might be the last reset we see from survivors now. Yeah, I mean, realistically speaking, now as a survivor, I have to make a choice. Do we reset? Do we go for the pickups? And will it matter in the end? Or do we try and crank out these gens to the best of our ability and hope that our chases are long enough? But Wraith making really short work of these survivors as resources have been dwindled to nothing. Lori, though, going to be able to get the vault in time. Wraith with a bit of a fake out there. And looks like Nia coming in for the body Ooh. block. But to say, these body blocks are going to get a lot riskier as now you, you obviously you're ready, you take the body block, you go back and heal. But there's only one survivor you have left to go heal with. It looks like that is a live play from the Nia getting a lot of Nia distance here. Eruptions no longer apply to that gen since they down the Quentin. And I imagine we're going to see probably not a slug here. I think they're going to hook. No, no they're like not. They okay. are, they're wanting Stick to, to the once plan. again, forcing the survivors to jump off of gens in order to go for the pickup. And I, I think it's effective. It's effective at slowing down the game to artificially do so, especially if the survivor Nancy's on this gen and they have to jump off of it, which they Ooh. don't as with the help of the lorry, they do complete it. Uh, and Good now it there. looks like we are going to see a, uh, a 4K, or 4K here as Nancy is now in chase and no Unbreakable is in play unless the Nancy able to play out of their mind. About to say, yeah, Nancy doing a really good job here, but they get the body block again. That windstorm and these body blocks are absolutely clutching at this game. The amount of times we've seen a survivor not be able to get to the resource they're desperately needed to do has been amazing to see. Yeah, no, absolutely. We see the uh, Nancy trying to get to something, maybe a locker to try and fake out the Wraith to some degree. Uh, but there's the locker play, there's the grab. And now it's going to come down to whether or not they're actually able to uh, find everyone on the ground before they bleed out. Yeah, you got to go. Uh, Nia has time to bleed out. Lori is on the last 30 seconds. They need to cloak up, go back to where they last slugged. Because again, with knockout in play, you also crawl slower. So you can't have gotten too far. But we're counting down the seconds here. We got 15 seconds at most. And this Lori needs to be picked up now or she's going to bleed out and deny the killer three whole points. And I think she's going to bleed out. Even if you uncloak here, it's too late. Yeah, I think wow. you're right. So with this playstyle, that's kind of the risk and the reward, right? Is that you mm -hmm. slow this down and for a Wraith to get a 4K at all is actually quite impressive. So that's Absolutely. one of the biggest things about all this is uh, Wraith playing really well, getting a 4K, pretty impressive, especially uh, against a pretty seasoned team uh, like mm -hmm. Cynic. So I'd say this is still a W. It's not enough for them to force a set three. But right. if I'm Zet here, I'm walking away pretty happy with the result. It's about to say, yeah, we, we've, kind of, we've, we've definitely been you know, in the moment enjoying this. Glancing over the fact that this is not a very well, uh, I would say, well-powered killer. I like them. I enjoy a Wraith game for sure. I enjoy the killer's power and the play style, but they're definitely not a high tier killer. And the fact that they played this, this was what, probably almost a 20 minute game, but it was methodical 
it was constant. It was a very mental game to be played here by this killer. Not to mention the survivors having to rotate, reset constantly. The fact that they were doing gens at all was kind of impressive. Yeah, I would one thousand percent agree. But that knockout new meta. Say again. Knockout new meta. Uh, I I doubt it. But you know, in the instance where you need to go for those slugouts, who knows? We might see it more often. But with that, that being said, that there will end up ending this match here for Cynic versus Chronicles. Cynic walking away with the victory in round number five. Do not worry, though, as we do have another match coming up at 2 p.m. CST. I do believe it is Divine Dead versus Iconic, but I'll have to confirm Ooh, on that. So one way or another, good. we do have another match here in just another 22 okay. minutes. But before we do go, we do want to thank you all for joining us here today. I, of course, am your commissioner and owner of Chains of the Fog, Guildspire. And this is my head of production and co-host today, Little Rugard. Ru, where would everyone be able to find you next time that you go live? You know, I'd like to know the exact same thing, because fun fact, I was going to be the one doing this on the back end, but uh, my production setup, I just lost my main monitor literally before the game started. I turned it on, it was working, it's not working anymore, so... I was gonna go live tonight. I'm gonna have to set up my backup PC and try and do some VR stuff because I can't play Dead by Daylight right now. I'm kind of... Hello. Hi. Yeah, you know, Discord just wanted to do Discord things. I'm like, I click on button. Discord's like, yes, you want to go into that VC? No, no, I do not want to go into that VC. Bye, I guess I just disappeared. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, pretty much. TLDR, Ruse monitor went kablooey. Yep, it uh, it died. And uh, we're going to be doing other things in the meantime. So may we might be live tonight. It depends on how much I get VR set up. In the meantime, if you want to watch Dead by Daylight, you're going to be going live with the PT, uh, sorry, with the new chapter this Tuesday, right? Yep, that is correct. I will be doing just that. Trying out the new killer and seeing what all can be done. I mean, I tested out a lot in the PTB and certain playstyles definitely work better than others, but they've given them a little bit of a uh, tweak here and there on the numbers. Mm -hmm. And I think it could go a long way to at least make them more powerful, but probably not making them the best killer in the game. But either way, it's going to be interesting to see what we uh, try out, maybe doing some Thrill of the Hunt Devo plays along with the drones on Ooh. top of which. Okay, okay. But I say, yeah, but the undetectable ability, Face the Darkness and uh, Thrill could actually be pretty nasty. It's, it's so weird because this is like one of the first killers that feels like a super hybrid style killer, you know? Yeah, definitely so. I would uh, tend to agree. But uh, with that being said, cool we are going to be wrapping things up. Like we mentioned, though, do not go anywhere. Only 20 minutes away from the mm -hmm. next match at 2. So with that being said, guys, we'll see you all in a little bit. And <laughs> we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.
break. We're going into trial number four. Chronicle is going to be cranking out the Wraith. And I will say, I, I don't put Wraith and Artists in the same category. We've seen crazier things. Maybe this Wraith comes out here and just two taps every single survivor in existence. But the Wraith got it up. 